touching you right now. Atmosphere of heaven is healing you right now. Touching you, changing you, making all things new. Fresh oil flowing from heaven. Fresh oil flowing from heaven. Lift your head. Touching you right now. The atmosphere of heaven is healing you right now. Restoring you, changing you, making all things new. It's fresh oil flowing from heaven. It's fresh. Your hands and receive right now. Because your past is over, your future is bright. So step on. Everything you need is here. Everything, everything, everything you need is here. Here are some of the things that the Lord had shown me 
these things I have uh, personally um, written down. Uh, I have chronicled these things. I have written them down for the sake of helping the body of Jesus Christ at large in the end times. This is the end times that we are in. And the end times means that a lot of things are going to happen which would require that we have the full knowledge, the full understanding, the full wisdom. Things have shifted a lot in our moment, in our time, in our seasons. Uh, remember that the seasons offer you the opportunity to prepare yourself for the next season. That's the way you are going to be able to deal with the next season. A time also record how things happen within uh, the seconds, within the minutes, and within the hours. The days and the nights, all these things work together to make sure that uh, everything that we do under the sun are clearly recorded. And it's always very important for men to get themselves ready. You see nations and kingdoms prepare themselves for years. They rehearse their preparation. Everything going on under the earth requires preparation, rehearsals. Whatever you are doing, it will take time. I want to talk with us a little bit about battles of the gods. Because that's the zone that we are in, in this moment. If you look at Africa, you see how much warfare that is going on in the regions of Africa. You see how much warfare that are going on in that continent. And you will see the intensity, the fierceness of the warfare that the African Christians are dealing with. And that has been happening for a while. And the reason why that intensity has kicked in is because as you begin to intensify your effort against the enemy, the enemy will also begin to implement his strategies. They will begin to compound their approaches to deal with the situation at hand. So oftentimes the battles will become extremely uh, pressuring uh, and intense and so people wonder how come it's like the more we fight the more things get uh, much more harder or become more pressurized that's what is happening because you are dealing with escalation of that battle so as we talk a little bit about the battles of the gods this is one of the books here that I have written down. So let me bring it close. That's chapter 1, Battles of the Gods. And this book is called uh, Image After His Likeness. Image After His Likeness will give you the keys that you need at the end times to actually function in your fullness. You need to be able to function in your fullness in the end times. There are so many other books that I have written that are designed for the time, moment that we are dealing with. And the reason why I use the word, I, I'm careful with the terminology that I use when I talk about some things. Especially when I'm dealing with the deep things of God, the hidden mysteries. I want you to be able to uh, see the details. Because when I use the word uh, moment, I am trying to show also how things today are happening without the length of season or the length of time or the length of period that we used to have uh, to prepare ourselves, to get ourselves ready. So even if things don't work out the right way, we can easily bounce back. When you are dealing with moments, there is not any room. You don't have any room to bounce back, then return. And so you're going to look at 
the book of Joshua chapter 10 when Joshua commanded the sun to stay still, to stand still. He suspended the sun to allow him to finish the battle because if he has to relapse, his enemy may actually uh, run into the dark of the night and hide away and reorganize and show back up again. So the intensity of some battles will require that you do everything to make sure you finish within that moment. If you don't finish within that moment, you may never have the opportunity to actually win the battle. This is why you have to be equipped to touch the fabrics of unusual authority and power. Sometimes you are not fighting just the enemy, uh, identified enemies like the persons, the soldiers, the military, the elements that are involved. You are fighting also against the weapons that they are using. And the battles of the people of God in the end times is going to become very fast. And that's the key to what I am going to speak about. I'm not going to take too much of our time. I also wrote this book here, Breaking the Cycle of Poverty. This book is an amazing material. So amazing that it's epic in nature. And reason is because of the revelatory nature of these materials. I am equipped for the moment that we are in, the end times, the bottom of the end times. The Lord showed me over the years, one segment after another segment after another segment until the moment that he was going to allow me to come forth and speak. So I'm beginning to open up some things that are very secretive, things that are very hidden, mysteries of the glory realms of God that are too unprecedented. Another book that you're going to see on my hand here, I've got, I'm just introducing only two books, is Mysteries of the Supernatural. Mysteries of the Supernatural. These are books that are not just books. They are books and they are books. What I would tell this generation is to ignore my materials at your own cost. I don't come here to sell stuff. I come here to show us hidden mysteries that will take you through the bottom of the end times. The bottom of the end times will be so challenging to deal with because of the arrangement of events that are going to happen. And so, as these things begin to uh, escalate, happen successionally, uh, sequentially, you will begin to find out that a lot of people will not have the room to adjust quickly. And so, revelation is to give you that momentary adjustment to be able to do the things that you can have not been able to do ordinarily. And this is why when I talk about the anointing and I talk about the glory of God and so forth, I contrast both to show us why the anointing is not enough to carry the great pressures of the end times. You're going to need the glory of the Lord. Because the glory is the way that you are going to deal with the unusual onslaught of the enemy. When the enemy begins to unify his battlefront against the people of God, bringing all nations to become one, bringing, making sure that he takes control of the systems of the world, joining all his demonic ranks or rankings, bringing all his agents and the agencies that are dedicated, fully trained and prepared for years to become part of the battle framework. 
a lot of the people of God will not have the capacity to actually adjust quickly because these things are going to happen fully. So you're going to need the glory of God to cue you in, to usher you in into the dimensional mode where uh, everything will become uh, transparent. You are able to see, you are able to hear, you are able to respond. This takes great power. Some of us don't know how the great power of God works. It works in totality. In other words, if you remember the stages, uh, this is for those who have gone through the stages of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The process is to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit on their lives. You will see that every time you pray and ask for uh, more outpouring, uh, the Holy Spirit is released to you in increments. Levels of the outpouring, measures of the release of the power. But the glory of the Lord works different because when things begin to happen from the uh, glory perspective, automatically, you are dealing with a different law that does not uh, allow or permit for the breakdowns of seasons and times. So everything, uh, everything is compounded. Everything is unified. So the, the space or the gap that you used to be very familiarized with is gone. So things are happening in a different speed, in a different pace. This is why I use the word moment. Moments are, uh, makes it possible for things to roll over without wasting any time. You may not even be aware of the timing. Because you're operating from the eternal dimensions. Eternal dimensions of the glory is going beyond the time frame that we normally walk with in the earth realm. So you are not, uh, there's no familiarity. This is why you depend, you wait on the Lord to reveal, to show you what is happening. If you, the Lord does not show you what is happening momentarily there is no hope at all not one hope because moments hides away what time how much time you have left when you're supposed to start and so forth and let me show you example the example is when the children of israel uh, we are transiting they have come out of the out of Egypt, the land of bondage, captivity, prison, torment. This is where the people of God are going now. They are coming out of great bondage. Hear me very clearly, people of God, wherever you will come in contact with this broadcast. This is where the people of God are going now. They are transiting. They are going to their promised land to inherit their true spiritual promises. And because the glory of God unifies the spirit realm and the physical realm to allow you to realize the spiritual blessings in the physical material aspect or, the, or to convert your physical material aspect into the spirit realm. This is how you walk in the fullness. As it is in heaven, so also in the earth. That's the unification that creates that transparency, allowing what is in the spirit to come into the physical and what is in the physical to penetrate the spirit realm. So now what will happen is that you will begin to achieve unusual acceleration because you have gained unusual momentum by tapping into the usual power of God Almighty. The reality of the working of that great power of God. 
what is happening now as the people of God are transiting to enter into the spirit realm fully, not partially. The anointing offers you the partial everything, partial spiritual experiences, but the glory will allow you to experience the fullness because you are able to enter into that realm and come out and enter in. So as they transit to enter into the promised land, what will happen is that you see why Moses didn't have every single thing, A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. Because some things are going to be revealed, suddenly opened up to them. And it will require Moses, to, uh, who has the ability to penetrate the spirit realm and come right out and communicate with the people. This is very important. So, you see the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. This spiritual phenomena was something extraordinary because they're going to need to be able to see and to be able to hear. As the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire begins to move, they have to immediately rise and begin to follow. As different from when the Holy Spirit is leading you, if the Spirit is operating through your life, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the infilling and the outward overflow, that's where you get the manifested presence. Because the Spirit comes up on you and then He you know, submerges. That's different. The glory opens up the spirit realm and you are able to encounter, come into proximity with real spiritual elements. You are able to share real spiritual experience. You can see, you can hear, you can come in contact with real angels. So things are working different. So you see that the children of Israel, if there was no pillar of fire, no cloud, a pillar of cloud, and no Moses, there's no way that they would know which way to go. And this is what a lot of people are dealing with right at this moment. They have to be able, remember that transitioning from the earth realm into the spirit realm require a spiritual map. You need someone that know the way. Jesus said, I am the way you have to. This is how you are going to understand it. If you want to go into the spirit realm, you need the spirit. This is why the anointing is the beginning stage. So that the spirit can lead you into the spirit realm. Once you reach the spirit realm, you will gain unusual freedom. That freedom comes with also unusual spiritual expression. You are able to respond fully to the great move of God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the end times is going to involve the battles of the gods. That's the closing aspect of the unusual battle that the people of God are going to go through in the end times. Every single thing that has the image of Satan, everything that has his nature, everything that has his mark, all these things are showing that, look, these things belong to me, and this, the enemy understands that the glory is all about defense. And the defense, they are come in two ways. You can initiate a defense by offense, and also building up to make sure that a certain territory, a domain, is also protected from, you know, infiltration or penetration. And because the glory of the enemy, the glory of this world, when you hear about the glory of the world, of this world, you have to immediately know that the glory of this world deals with the glory of Satan. So... It's all about utilizing everything about the world 
to protect the interests of the demonic kingdom or rulership is to utilize every single thing that is available to the kingdom of Satan to fight any opponent. So this is where the people of God are going to you know, feel the pressure. A lot of pressure. Because now you're going to deal with different elements, different faces, different dimensions, different areas. And some of them, you, you, you can watch them. Things will start gradually. And before you know it, things will begin to spread out. You will come in contact with things that will amaze you. People are having dreams everywhere across the world about strange objects, strange enemy, strange things appearing to them, strange things are fighting them, strange weapons of warfare entering the battlefront and the battlefield. Some of these things have been concealed because it is for the glory to conceal a thing. It's not just only the glory of the Lord God, but the glory of the enemy and the glory of nations and the glory of individuals when they are preparing, they prepare secretly. The moment that they have to suddenly show up to perform, they will appear and nobody knows what they have in their possessions. Because they want to maintain their glory. They want to keep their glory. They don't want to lose it. And this is where the battles of the gods will show up. This is why we are convinced. We, are, In fact, I am 100% sure that in this end times, some people of God are going to rise to move in the great power of God that the earth has never seen since the creation, since the fall of man. And the reason is because they will pierce the reins of God fully. They will become fully transformed to a point where the glory of heaven will radiate over their lives. That will be an amazing thing. So they will walk in the power of God that is beyond what you have seen since Jesus died and, 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 and rose and ascended into heaven. The reason why these things are going to happen, people, is because the revelation of Jesus Christ will deal with who he is. And there is no way to deal with who he is without the Father showing up in the scene because the glory of, of, of God is unified in the Father and made one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord God Almighty. Don't let the personification of God uh, get you confused. His personification can get you real confused and you are saying, oh, maybe God is 200 or 1 million gods, but it's one person personifying himself, taking different forms and appearances. And how do you understand these things? You can understand these things by uh, looking at his created works. His created works are languages of expressions. Languages of expressions are used to go beyond learning and practices. That's why depth of knowledge is not academic. Because it's a place where you will reach and knowledge can no longer be taught. <laughs> there is a place where you will reach and understanding can no longer be imparted or taught. There is a place where wisdom can no longer be taught or imparted. That's how you know that you are shifting from the anointing into the glory of God because with the anointing, it can be imparted because whoever received the anointing, on, you know, the anointing brings inspiration. And from that inspiration, you are able to teach others. That's how it is imparted. You are able to minister to others. That's how the impartation works. Same way that the anointing works on you uh, when it is released, it can also 
touch other people's lives. But the glory cannot be imparted because God Almighty and All-Powerful is consolidating everything to focus on himself. Whenever he used the word, I am the Lord, thy God, he is saying there is no other, it's me. So you see how he consolidates his great power? One side almighty and the other side all powerful. And so you are dealing with enormous power because of the revelation of him. And so, and, and for the reason or the fact that he is personifying, assuming his full identity, you are going to be so surprised about some of the things that are going to happen right before your eyes. When he begins to take forms, like the Israelite, you see the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. When he begins to use the created works to express his greater power. <laughs> oh my God. That's why I use the word a language of expression. These things are going to happen. There are some people of God that you are going to meet in the end times. I'm so 100% sure of what I'm talking about here. You are going to meet with them. And when you will meet with them, you will find out. They are not going to speak the normal language or normal languages of men. Because once their lives have become one with the Father, they are going to bring the revelation of the kingdom of heaven. They are going to bring the revelation of the glory of God. They are going to bring the revelation of the unusual power of God at work because it, it, they, once this phenomena begins to kick in, they will become like, you know, translators, but I'm using a common word. A better word will be uh, that they will be able to stand and to declare they will sequence. They will synchronize the voice of the Father with their own voices. They will hear and see and they will declare it. And as they are declaring it, these things are happening. These are not no play, and these are not fake things. These are real. So, the battle of the gods is where everything that uh, has claimed the right, the privilege, or the titles, whether honorary or, or just a claim, anything that projects itself, to be a deity or represent a deity like the case of Moses. You have to know that the battle of Moses with Pharaoh was not an elementary battle. That's the battle of the gods. That's why God said, I will make you a god to Pharaoh. Because it takes gods to fight other gods. Same way it takes principalities to deal with principalities. It takes powers to deal with powers. You got to be able to match your opponent or override their capacity or ability. If not, you can win. There is no draw in the spirit realm. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. There is no draw. You got to come to a place where, okay. That's why you hear the Lord when he, sp he speaks. He say, I am the Lord God Almighty or All Powerful. He has to present himself that way. That look, if it required that I go all the way to use excessive force beyond you know, what any power can deal with or any authority can deal with, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. But this takes for him to show he, he himself, to reveal his glory. It's very important for us to you know, to know how the glory works in the end times. Because that's what is going to happen. The earth is going to be full of the knowledge of the glory. That's the fullness. As the water covers the sea, we are going to empty out the depth of God. So that people will be able to respond. So always you see why the anointing is just a stepping stone. The battles of the gods, you are dealing with a bunch of of elements, humans, demons, idols, 
element, anything that has been objectified as uh, some type of uh, a symbol of worship. The enemy will weaponize them and use them to, you know, to, 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 to deal with his enemies. This is why God also show up in the battlefields and in the battlefronts. Because it's God against God, the agents of Satan against, you know, sons of the devils against sons of, you know, of God. This is the end times. This is the balancing act. So if you are not, if the people of God are not really prepared, the degree to which they are prepared would, de would determine if they are even fit for the battle. And I'm going to conclude right here. This is what you see with Gideon. <laughs> Oh, come on. This is where God himself had to step in and go beyond what any human being can do. Remember that the end times battles can, will only be decided through judgment. And I'm not going to get into that right now, but at a different time I will work it out to show you how. The end times great battles can only be decided by judgment because the spirit realm uh, is, is endless when you are dealing with eternity there's no end if not the battle can never end because now you are stretching everything to include to involve every representative every associate every uh, personnel every entity every power every authority so as you begin to gather them from one stage to another stage to another stage, there's no end. So the Lord God has to come in and exercise his sovereignty. <laughs> oh God. Unless he exercise his sovereignty and bring his judgment to conclude everything, the revelation of the beginning and at the end, no end to nothing. Folk will fight until they are exhausted and they can't win. You know, hear the people of God say a lot of things, but um, please, <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. When you begin to face out from the physical realm into the eternal realm, automatically you have come to a place where there is no end. No beginning, no end. The only person that can conclude everything is the Lord God Almighty and all-powerful. <laughs> oh. Battles of the gods in these end times. Uh, idols that your parents worshipped, your forefathers, for generations, all of a sudden they will show up in the battlefront, in the battlefield. If, there's, if these things are not being are, are addressed, destroyed, and the demons dealt with, they will surface. That's where everything becomes confusing because who is this person that suddenly appeared in the battlefield, in the battlefront? What business do you have here? And there's no time to sit down and explain every single thing. So things will become much more complex. I, I want us to be able to see why we need prayer like we have never prayed before in the end times. We need a great glory. The great glory is the conclusion of every matter that exists from the earth to any other place. When the great glory of the Father show up, when I come here next time, I'm going to show you some mysteries of the glory of the living God. That will, I mean, you will look at it and you will wonder what in the world. Hmm. God, let me pray with us, Father. La ba sho to ri aku kabe se ti la hai. Al de sho to zo ho la tai I give you the glory tonight in this place, right where they are, wherever they will connect here on this broadcast. Brother Bassi, every other person that will show up and connect with this broadcast, I pray that your eyes will flip open your ears. Every ounce of your whole being will become so sensitized that you will become consumed to a point where you pierce in. Your whole being is pulled in. Because some of these things I'm talking about here, they are not easy to understand. Unless we are pulled in. 
We are pulled in because we are ready to speak with the Father himself. Part of bringing us to the Father is because we are ready to be able to understand his language. Hmm, God. Oh, Jesus, my God. I pray for every one of you across the world. The remnant, you are coming forth. You are coming forth. You are coming forth. It's not a great number. The remnants, you are coming forth. Like Gideon, a lot of them will just walk away, will go home. But once they begin to be pulled in, Gideon had to communicate with the Father. How do we do this? How do we do this? How will this work? How will this work? Because nobody has the real plan. He had to reveal it. Secret things belong unto God, except those things that He revealed to us, to our children. I thank you, Father, tonight. I thank you so much. Let them rise and conquer and continue to conquer. It's for them, for this moment. Some of them will not go through so much challenges because everything will be compounded and the pressure will be too great that they will sacrifice their lives as a whole, not fearing death, and they will just walk across. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, you have been watching Power and Glory broadcast, your crossroad. Apostle John King Hill. You can go to www.johnkinghillministries.com for more, or you could check us also at God's Royal Women.org. www.godsroyalwomen.org. We have a lot of materials that are purposefully revealed and documented for this end times. That's why we are coming forth to show you these mysteries so that your life will never be the same again. This is not a baby talk. 